we're on. That was a reminder for me, in case you really were continually remote, I need to make videos for those who are remote, like I've got Xander Crookham, Xavier, I had you on that list, but a decision was made to come. Therefore, you're here. So I have to make these and then upload them to that famous YouTube channel that I set up last quarter. How many of you guys have seen my YouTube channel? <laughs> That's a trick question. <laughs> You're like, if you don't put your hand up, they're like, oh, I totally blew off every single one of your required lessons, and Mr. Hansen, right? Yeah. Did, you go, did you watch my YouTube channel? <laughs> Do you remember what the subject matter was? That was a long time ago. Yeah, world history. Yeah, the American Civil War. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Who won? Yeah. <laughs> The North or the South? <laughs> God. How many of you guys are like, oh yeah, let's do some more online education? No. No, it's okay. No, it's like, how do I know if all of my students have actually watched the YouTube video lessons that I put up? Exactly. I mean, it's really simple. There are two numbers. Both are in the double digits. One, the number of students I have in class, the number of people who do views. <laughs> yeah, I hope we can all stay healthy enough so we can do this. There's some challenges enough in doing in-school instruction, but I tell you what, it does beat the whole online thing. I noticed this because if a student was really disciplined and like watched, made sure that they got on to watch the lessons and so forth, they were okay. How many of you guys are like, I'm not that kind of disciplined sort of person thing. I mean, that's my daughter. She, in high school, she was trying to do an online course. It's really hard because you got to find the time, you got to have the discipline and so forth. It's tricky. And I feel for like the kids right now in the West Ada School District, right, the ones at Eagle, Rocky and so forth that are going to be doing the online instruction until who knows when and anyway. So yeah, in here, you guys will be in a good place. We'll learn you up what you need to know for government, okay, for government class. Tenth grade class, if you were at Eagle or Rocky, would you be taking government right now? No. I don't know what they have. What is the social studies class for tenth grade? I mean, I don't know if there even is a required one in West Ada. Did you do one like in ninth grade? Geography, sort of in ninth, yeah. And then um, 11th, I think, history. 12th is when, like Boise School District, where I used to teach that capital ages ago, they do econ, 12th grade semester, and they do a full year of government, right? So, like, if you transfer part way through, this is why Frank is like, I gotta hang out with the tenth graders. Yo, Frank is a cool twelfth grader. In case you haven't met Frank before, and he's picking up that credit that he missed out on getting because you came in too late in that first semester of government class. So, no big whoop. You're getting it right now, which is cool. These are they're good. I'll vouch for them. Yeah, maybe not last year. I'm just kidding. No, last year they were awesome. They were like awesome ninth graders and everything and so forth, okay? So we're getting that first semester work, because you had my second semester, right? So actually that'll, that'll fit perfect because you won't have a lot of overlap. So, but Nathan who is here, do, 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 so how many we got? So all my desks, so 14. Fourteen, cool. Um, some of you guys know me, so I'll ask you, Riley, yeah. what do you suppose for those students who are new to my class, and I see four of them, um, first time they've ever had a Mr. Hansen class, what kinds of things do you anticipate that I might do in here that I did last time so that they should have maybe out and ready to go on a regular basis in my class? Paper. You've got a whole bound thing of paper there and so forth? Yeah, probably. That's, that's not a bad idea. Um, I noticed you don't have paper in front of you. What is this? What, what you got some electronic-y thing? Yes, because I didn't write all summer, so maybe I didn't have that. 
Uh, so you don't have to handwrite in here. You can have some paper as an organizational thing to write notes. We do a lot of note taking in here. Okay, we do a lot of note taking. So you can have paper, whether it's loose leaf, probably best to have like a bound thing. I can't remember if any of you guys were like really crappy at like keeping papers and stuff together. It helps if it's already bound. Or you can have a computer electronic device. Right? I'm not going to give lots of notes today, so if you don't have that available right now, just note to bring that in, a composition notebook or a binder, or you can have electronic device. Think about the electronic devices is it's just for the taking of notes. Right? But what if there's other really cool electronic uses that you want to do, like play a game? You're like, no, don't do that. Why not? Yeah, you're supposed to focus on me. Yeah. yeah, I'm your teacher. When I'm like a jealous teacher, I think that would actually describe it pretty well. When it's like my time with you, that's my time with you, and not with, I don't know, Tetris or whatever kinds of, you know, that, who does Tetris? I mean, whatever. Yeah, so that's, yeah, so as far as like what you need to have in class for the, for the taking of notes, either one of those will do, okay? Um, this actually is a very good question for this year, and I've had previous students asking me about this, so I want to give an answer on this for my class. Um, if you get thirsty, do you imagine getting thirsty? How many of you guys get thirsty? How many of you guys have partaken of liquids today in the last five minutes, in the last ten minutes? What are you, a camel? I mean, good grief. You can have beverages in here. Yes. Pull down your mask. That's the thing, right? You guys have all got masks and so forth. I hate masks. They cloud up my glasses, right? I don't know if you're having a problem with that. So that's why I did my cool shield thing. With the, like, zip tie thing, I poked holes. I know, it's a shame. I poked holes in this baseball cap to put in my shield so that I can drink my beverage. And during fifth period when there's a Mr. Blevins has got his class in here. You are, and I was eating lunch over here, trying not to guess, get it all over my shield, right? So here's the deal. The question came up yesterday, and I got an answer from Mrs. Anderson, I'll tell you guys. For food in the past, I was no problem with food in here, people eating and so forth and so on. Um, and actually, some students really liked that because they got hungry at all kinds of curious times of the day. Or during lunch, which we used to have 50-minute lunch periods, you remember that? And now we took... Five minutes away for break, five minutes away for a passing period, five minutes, that was 20 minutes of additional like time for passing periods. You wonder where lunch went? It went into all the passing periods. So we have a half an hour for lunch, 11.50, for me that's kind of late in the morning since I get up so early. But if you get hungry, here's the deal. Daniela, you just have some food on your side. You pull down your, if you're hungry, in my class, okay? And you just pull down your little facey mask. You pop it in and do that. Don't take your mask off entirely. Just pull it down to get some food in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I do that, can I do what I do by class here and keep my whole lunch in your class? Keep your mask on. Well, what, why don't you? Well, that was earlier in the day, wasn't it? Seriously? You would wait till after lunch to eat in my class? No, well, that is true. I mean, because... Again, if you are just like very quickly, right? But don't lay out like a five-course meal and so forth with, you know, silverware and whatever and da 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 We are in a COVID situation here, Xander, so we need to take precautions. But, yeah, no, I think that would be fine. Yeah, so just, yeah, you know, shovel it in and then do your masticating, chewing, and your digestion behind the mask, okay? Any questions about that? Also, this was interesting because, like, the bathroom, and in here, we are, here's how it'll work. Um, I'm going to finish up at 155, right? But you're not going to leave. I mean, you already got the, the figure that out if, by this type of day. He was in the hallways first. Middle. Middle school. Yeah, not you, right. The, those other people that move around in the building and yeah. mouth breathe and do other kinds of things. Yeah, the middle schoolers go first, Okay. And you guys come out of here at 158. What we'll do at 155 is I'll have you guys go first, 
And then you guys, and we have to be able to, this is actually my biggest class. Oh my gosh. You're like, this is a big class? This is big. Um, but you're going to grab hold um, right behind Morgan. Uh, there are some wipes behind there. And then just wipe down the desk or desks if you've used both of them, which it looks like most of you have. Right? No, no, that's okay. You don't need to be like, because when I, other teachers were like, you know, setting up their rooms for their classes, and they're like, you need to get rid of desks, and we'll store them in the thing. And I'm like, I'm not going to get rid of desks. I got to protect my things over here, so I got my desk there. And then I know what you do if there's a desk next to you. You spread out, right? Right? Spreader. Not so spreading. Not so spreading. He's got, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, make yourself comfortable. I would. I did. I mean, hello. You need another desk. And so be careful. She's going to try and take over your desk, too. Yeah. She's going to exercise homogeny or something. You're like, what? It's like imperialism. It's like taking over stuff, right? How many of you guys have siblings that are like space takers? Um, yeah. How many of you guys are that sibling that's like a space taker? And your older sibs or younger sibs are like, get out, that's my space. Mom, mom, that's mine. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so you guys are welcome to spread out, but if need be, wipe it down. And then we'll let you leave. Oh, by the way, here's a specific instruction for you, um, because I think you guys, after this class, do you have PE? So you go right out toward the gym. So you should be fine. The gymnasium. Yes, the gym. Yeah, that's an eighth, that's an eighth period issue, so, but don't worry about that right now. Let it haunt you later on, okay? So, and I guess that you can't use the showers in the gym. This, yeah. I don't know, do they? Really? Okay. I haven't noticed it sometimes in, I mean, if people, I don't get into too much in this issue, but I'm glad you bathe, and I'm glad that when you come in here, I usually don't notice a lack of bathing kind of thing, because I, yeah, that's an issue. And usually, hopefully, it gets resolved with a few key conversations in the middle school so that uh, your teachers don't gag when you walk in the room. We can have, like, positive feelings about you when we see you. So thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, at 1.58, you will leave having wiped down your desks and so forth. Okay? All right. Now, I don't know who that is. You know who Hannah Laughlin is? Hmm? Hannah Laughlin. I have that name written down. She might have been initially coming here. We got Morgan. Okay. All right. Let's get to it, shall we? Um, and as questions come up, I mean, this is the third time I've done this. I'm going to do it one more time with the rest of the 10th grade class during eighth period. If questions come up, raise them so that you have an understanding of kind of like where things are going. OK? All right, let's get to it. Um, I gave you a handout. Um, 10th grade government, there's my name, there's my email address, there's the address of the school, you're here, you don't need to necessarily know that, there's the phone code. Oh, wow, this is really helpful. Mr. Hansen put Google Classroom code to be provided. Really? You made a new Google Classroom for 10th grade and you didn't even bother writing down the password. What a nuisance. Would you like to know the password? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I think some of you need to know the password, all right? Some of you needed to know the password when, and actually access it regularly last quarter. Here's the password. You ready? All lowercase. You can hear me. Write it down. You can look over here if you've got really good eyesight. All lowercase, P-M-A-Q-M-J-N. That will get you to my Google Classroom. P M A Q. M J N. P M A Q. Come see me afterwards if you need to. Q? Q, yeah, Q. Okay. Yeah. M J N. 
as in Nancy. Wait, 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 what was the last name? No, I mean Nancy, I told you to say. Mary Nancy. 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 You got it all caps. It's not caps. It's got to be lowercase. Sorry. There, J N. <laughs> there you go. So, what'll be on the Google Classroom? Well, I can tell you what's there right now. Uh, a downloadable copy of the piece of paper you have in front of you. Whoa. And that's mostly for the, like the at-home peeps, okay? Because they're getting the recording right now, and so they're going to want to have access to things that otherwise would be handed out in class. They're also also on there right now is a handout I'll give to you before the class is over because we're going to get started on our uh, notes for our first unit. Okay? And our first unit is forms of government. Also, on my Google Classroom, right, because that's what the teachers use to convey information, especially to the remote at-home uh, learners, um, but also for those other days. Like yesterday, did you guys have any work? Did you get any work for English yesterday? What about for tomorrow? Do you have some work for English? Uh, do you have some work for some other classes? Yeah, do you have some work for this class? No, there we go. It's always good to have a probably assumption. I don't yet. I may. And Daniela, where would I put that information? Google exactly. Yeah, I'll put it on Google Classroom. And the kinds of things in my classes we go through the year that I'll put on Google Classroom for you to do on the other day, the day that I don't get to see you, instead of like having a nice 90 minute period with you and I only get to see you for like 45 minutes, I'm actually not that excited about it. I'm excited that I actually get to be with you and teach you because it beats the online learning, but I don't like the smaller amount of time. And part of that is because in my class, we do a lot in class. Some of you guys will nod your head and go, it's like, well, do we, have, did we have lots and lots and lots of homework in Mr. Hansen's class last year in the ninth grade? No. Because we did a lot in class. I mean, that's how my instruction is. Do you do more homework traditionally, like for reading and writing for English and math homework and maybe Spanish and things like that? So the model of the hybrid where, we, where I only get you for 45 minutes it's going to be a bit of a challenge because um, I don't have as much time for, the, for my direct instruction, for my lectures and things like that. So here's what you will get typically um, for the at-home portion, like tomorrow. You may have some reading, getting ready for a chapter quiz. And I think next, or next, uh, next time I'll assign you a textbook. But what do you think? What do you think? Is there a lot of learning that Mr. Hansen uses textbooks in order to accomplish? Do you wonder that? Megan, do you wonder that? Do you want to ask these guys if Mr. Hansen like, assigns lots of book work? Go ahead. Ask Amanda right here. Ask her, does Mr. Hansen assign a lot of book work? Do? No, no, I don't. <laughs> and then it's like, uh huh. <laughs> no, it's like, read the chapter and answer the questions at the back. No! I mean, I, there are times when you need to read the chapters and get ready for the quizzes, right? So that part. Job was a lot for me, yeah. I mean, you're like, I know the people like, oh, man, can I have man? Um, but compared to what you are tested on, does most of that come from like in class or outside of class? In class. Yeah, so what goes on in here is going to be very, very important, okay? Um, and so every once in a while, I'm trying to think, some classes it works out a little bit more like I'll have the lecture and then I'll have videos that I bring in and, and do. And so sometimes your at home will be videos. I might also create some other additional things for you to, to do at home. So keep an eye on that as we go forward as far as what you need to do in the at home part. Okay, and that's the same question you're going to have in all the different classes. And I hope it works out so that when you are in school on those days, you're not like, oh my gosh, I got two days worth of material in one day. I think that those are going to be pretty full because I think myself, for sure, 
I'm going to be pushing some of the maybe lighter stuff to the at-home part. Good question, and I've actually a number of people have asked that. Do you guys like doing the group video projects and stuff? You got, really? Okay, not really. Never mind. The group part, yeah. I don't get it. How is the group part of making a video not like the making of the video? Oh, you like hanging out with people. Well, yeah. How many guys like watching other people's videos? Yeah, there you go. So. My guess is maybe not. In the past, uh, every semester, we put people into groups, and usually they make their groups and so forth, and they create some really, I mean, there were some fun things. I can still remember, like, Daniela dressed as, uh, what president were you, Taft or McKinley, or who were you? Oh, great, thank you. Which one? Oh, Cleveland. Oh, whatever, we have one. Um, so, yeah, and it was fun, because I get to see, like, a really creative part of it and so forth. And we were doing that. Uh, second semester when COVID hit and like pretty much all, most of the ninth grade groups just like pfft, disappeared because you just couldn't do that. I mean, it was just too hard. There were some that did it. I don't know. Uh, my guess is maybe no, unfortunately. So we'll try and do things. It's like, guess what I'm not including in ninth grade early this semester? <laughs> Remember the Mongol trading game you guys did? Well, that was fun, where you went around and you traded, and then Mr. Hansen did like a card game, and I pulled out, and like if you pulled a black card, you were dead from the black death, to give a sense of what it would have been like to live in a period of history where there was a pandemic. <laughs> Weird, I know. I mean, it was very educational last year. I don't think I'm going to do it this year, because like, you know, social distancing and... This is history. We're living history. I mean, I wish we weren't. <laughs> I mean, I can't even like, I, I'm really trying to minimize like the exchange of physical nasty disease, dis germ ridden papers and stuff. So for example, daily warm up, gone. Formative question, gone. All right. Less paperwork and you're like, what? I like those parts. Those were easy points, right? Yeah, and you're like, yeah. They take up a lot of time. Um, here's the thing, and you're like, well, give me some easy points, Mr. Hanson, because some of those points can be pretty hard. They're, they're harder to get, like test points and quiz points and things like that. So keep your desk clean. Stay awake. That's not really an issue. I, I haven't noticed in here. Maybe among the, some, some of the senior class. Not Frank, OK. Oh, he's in my other class. What? Nothing, never mind. Um, so yeah, stay awake, stay attentive, stay, hmm, yeah, it's awesome. And we'll give you some easy points all, along that way. Why about what? Andrew, actually, I think you did get a little blurry eyed. Now that you had, now that you've like refreshed my memory, did he? I mean, those of you guys, some, I mean, you were too. You did, yeah. yeah. Your older sister did, not the, Oh, yeah, she did too. Yeah. I think it was like during a particularly hard cross country season. And she was a senior, and it was like a lot of work candle burning both ends. Yeah, she was down on the floor for the count. And I'm like, hello, should we just leave her there? Anyway, so um, yeah, so we'll kind of manage that part. Also, notes I'm not going to collect them from you. You're like, what? You need to take good notes. How am I going to possibly know whether or not you took good notes? Exactly. If I give you essay tests, or you're actually doing the tests in here, which by the way, that's what I like, the in-class learning and so forth. I can have you do tests and quizzes in here with confidence and integrity and like oversight, yeah. which is cool. Okay. Yeah, I learned the hard way when I tried to put a test together for last year's 10th grade class, and like I didn't know what I was doing, and they quickly were like, oh, look, there's all the answers, and they gave them to the next class. And like half the class got 100%. And I'm like, you cheaters. <laughs> I'm really disappointed. You hurt me right here. Um, so yeah, if I have to do the whole online thing, it's essay. So for, for the at-home learners and so forth, I'm not going to be having like um, multiple choice, true, false, quizzes, and tests, and things like that. There will be some other kind of alternative assessment, probably along the lines of essays. Although it does help you to be continually getting better at writing good essays. 
in the history government kind of context. Why, Frank? There's a whole lot to do here. Yeah, exactly. The IB history exams are pretty much essays. Yeah. Traditionally, if we're not in COVID, you would write like five essays in two, two uh, seating times and then another time where another you know, writing thing. So it actually does help you to write good essays. Okay. Um, let's see. Take a look at the course outline there that I've got. Uh, my goal is to go through all of that material. Okay, so first semester, our first unit is going to be forms of government. It's a mini, mini unit. We might wrap it up like within the space of a couple of weeks, max. You're like, yeah, it's true. It's possible. That's the shortest unit you'll probably ever have for me. And then we'll go on to totalitarian government. Oh, that's fun. We're going to be talking about in Russia. How in Russia they end up with a totalitarian government. Communists. Yes, but they actually had very powerful authoritarian governments and not much freedom even before the commies took control. And I'm pointing to my communist propaganda posters that I picked up when I traveled there in 1985 before I destroyed the Soviet Union and ended the Cold War. You remember that story? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. You're like, you did this much, Mr. Hansen, but I was there. And some of my friends actually did participate in that in the singing revolution. This is the year you learn about the singing revolution. Some of you guys are like, I saw that movie in choir. Right, how many of you guys saw that movie in choir? Nobody? Singing revolution. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, maybe it wasn't in context because choir is about singing. Government's about government. And in the context, you had very creative people who were standing up against totalitarian rule. Animal Farm, remember that from last year? <laughs> when you're like, why did we have to read that? It was because of me. Because the context that it's going to bring up, Animal Farm is set during the time of the Soviet Union when the commies are in charge, the pigs are in charge. And it brings it all into context. How many of you guys are like, oh, yeah, I could just imagine being in a world where things are so crazy, we just want to give all power to one or a small number of people? How many of you guys are okay with that? Good. I see you shaking your head. I am totally on board with that. Eve, why are you shaking your head? Don't you want, like, no totalitarian ruler to bring peace and prosperity and order? No? Why not? works out. What do you mean it works out? Things are calmer if the police are in their streets keeping everything down and like people aren't complaining against the government. Everything's cool, right? No. What do you want to like have a voice? Yes. yes. What if nobody, what if some people don't agree with your opinions that you're voicing? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Well, you'll try to work on them or maybe work on enough other people so that you win the election. That's a democracy. There's a reason why we're going to do this nasty totalitarian government unit. Because at the end of it, I think you'll look and go, that really sucks. I really hope we don't ever go into that in our country. Because that would really suck. And I'm understanding a little bit more why Mr. Hansen left uh, his original career in, what was that? A lawyer, yeah. And to go into education, which pays so much more. Um, and part of that, <laughs> you what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm joking. No, writing. No, that, that didn't pay very well either. <laughs> okay. so we go back to that when I got enough coming in retirement. That's coming up sometime. Um, but yeah, so then when we get to the end of the totalitarian unit, you'll be like, okay, I know democracy is messy, annoying. There are stupid people with stupid opinions who are formed in stupid ways, and they're voicing them, and it's so frustrating, and they actually get a vote in elections, but you know what? I'll go with democracy, right? Because that's what we're going to be focusing on the rest of the way. I'll go with let the people vote. Although, look at next sem the second semester. Civil rights. Civil rights are hugely important. We can't just say, wow, we're going to vote to take your stuff away. We're going to vote to shut you up. Majority rules. How many of you guys have ever heard that? Majority rules, and then they're just like, want to take your stuff away, and you're like, I don't think the majority is okay. Civil rights are about those things that are very important that stand up against, like a dictatorship of the majority. 
These are things that we're going to be covering in here, and it's awesome. Okay? All right. Let's get started, shall we? Oh, man, I'm, I'm psyched. Let's get to our first unit. Forms of government. Do, 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 do. It's only one page. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> and if you didn't yet bring a notebook, you can write the beginning part of the notes on something that is available to you, or even the bottom of this, and then just make sure that you have something really good to um, take notes on the next time, okay? All right, you ready? Let's do this. In this unit, which we'll be going by very quickly, you are going to learn some key terminology like absolute monarchy, totalitarian dictatorship, noble rule, la 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 la, legislative, executive, judicial authority. And you're like, oh, I know that. Legislative, judicial, and executive authority, that's like the three branches of government. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the three branches of government. That's kind of like basic elementary government stuff you do. And now you're in high school, it gets more complicated. Much more complicated, right? But we still use some of the basic terminology. Here's one that I'm going to give you today, a definition that we're going to stick with. It's going to help explain a lot of things, even help explain some of the crazy things that are going on in the world today and how it comes out. You ready? Legitimacy. Write it down. Legitimacy. I'm going to give you a definition. Legitimacy. And you actually, if you have the sheet that I just handed to you in front of you, which is always a good thing to do, um, it will help you to understand this. A definition of legitimacy, or sometimes referred to as political legitimacy. Right? Legitimacy. Ready? Here we go. A sense of the people that the government system that's in charge, I'll repeat it, don't worry, ought to be in charge. I'll repeat that first part of the definition and then we'll go to the second part of the definition. It's a sense of the people that the government